Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Ashley. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today I thought that I would come into my craft room. I got these two blanks here at the Dollar Tree. So this one is just a wood scalloped shape and it came in this bare wood color and it just says wood shapes and of course it's $1.25 now. And I just painted the front. I gave the front one quick coat of white chalk paint. And then this is the other blank. It came like this. It had a tag on this side. I ripped it off, I'm sorry, because as you can see, I painted it, a DIY sign. But when I saw the two, I thought it would be really cool to combine them and make a sign out of it so that it would kind of sit like this and then I could sit it up. So I was thinking, today being the first day of September, to me, it is fall. Um, my husband says I'm crazy, but today is officially the first day of fall for me, uh, September 1st when I'm making this. So I thought it would be cool to come in and just make something kind of fall, Halloween themed, and have some fun today. So like I said, this is the front of this blank. I just gave this one one coat of the same chalk paint that I used for this one. I started to paint it and then I realized I didn't need to paint anything but the edges because you can just very, very see them like around the edge. I'll see if I can show you. But you can see there's just a little bit of white. Um, so I wanted to paint around the edge, but then I like quickly realized I don't need to paint the whole thing. So I stopped, but um, if you want to do this, I suggest just painting just around the edge here where you'll see it a little bit. And then I personally don't paint the edges of my wood um, and also the back because one, I'm lazy and I only have, you know, a limited amount of time to craft. So I try to make the most of it. And two, for me, it doesn't bother me. Um, but if you like a more finished look, then you could absolutely paint all the way around. So starting off, the first thing I'm gonna do is take the scallop part that I want on top. I'm just going to quickly measure it. And I'm just gonna do from like the most inward part here. So I'm gonna say that's just about seven. It looks like maybe 7.25, but I'm gonna round it to seven. And then I'll just do one of the scalloped edges that are in this way, just so I can get you know, one of the shortest spots, just so I don't make my design too long. And I'll say that's about four and a half. So I'll say seven by four and a half. And then let's take those measurements and jump into design space. Now coming into the design space, the first thing I'm going to do is go to shapes. I'm gonna drop, grab a square and I will unlock the square and make it seven by four and a half, which are the measurements that I just took off of my scallop. Now, obviously the shape and design space isn't gonna be a scallop. Um, I'm sure there is a way to do that. I'm not aware of it. So that's why I just take the innermost measurements for my scallop. And that way I know that I'll have enough space. I size my design to fit this. I know it'll fit my sign. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this square white just because that's the color of my blank. Um, and then I'm gonna use that to size my image. So I have an image saved. I have a couple and I'm actually gonna see which one I think looks the best with my blank, um, which is how I usually like to do things, how it looks, right? All right, so bringing in my two designs here. This is the first one and I thought this was super cute and I wanna see if I can size this, let's go ahead and unlock it and see again if we can kind of manipulate this to fit our blank that we have the best that it can. So I want to try to make it right a little taller. There we go. Like that to me looks a lot better, right? And you can always do that and feel free. Like that's the best part of it. So that looks good. And then let's go to the second one because I pulled in two just to see. So this is the second one. And let's see, listen, I love this one. I really, really do. Oh, this is hard because I really do like that one. But I'm going to tell you what. Oh, guys, I wish you guys could help me pick. Okay, so I decided this one is super cute and I am going to be putting this on something else for sure. But I think I'm going to do this one and... My only hesitation was with this one is I wanted more colors, but I was just being a little lazy and you can absolutely do this and split it up to make it into 
to make it a multiple colored project. Um, and I'll show you how. So first I'm just going to duplicate my design and then I will click one and what I'm going to do is contour out everything that I want in a different color. So in my instance, I want to make the bats a different color. So I just contoured those out of this one and you can see here, right, there's no bats. So then I'll come to this one and I'll go to hide all contours and then I just want to leave the bats in this one. So I'll click all that out and then it always leaves something um, like when you say hide all contours, it leaves something there because then it would just be nothing. Um, so I'm going to click out of what it automatically left. And then now you see I have two different files, right? So now I can cut the spooky out of one color and then I can cut the bats out of another color. And you can do that. Like you could do the stars a wholly, totally different color. You could, the sky's the limit, right? It's just, a matter of how many times you want to duplicate it and like go through the process of like contouring and getting things out right so now these bats will cut together and this will cut together this was sized really nicely for my project so i'm going to go ahead and delete my square and then i'm going to say make it all right guys i'm just gonna make, oh let's go actually let's go back see here when i hit make it it put this back both on the same mat, right? And I want to cut these in two different colors. So that would be fine. Like if I had two pieces of scraps, I could make it work. But in this instance, I don't want to do that. So all you need to do is just come to one layer or the other, whichever one you decide, and change one of the colors. So then once you do that, now it's going to separate them on the mat. Now it'll have the bats cutting in black and then the spooky in pink, which is how I'm going to do it. So from there, I'm just going to continue. And then I'm going to get my mats loaded and I'll see you when it's done. Alright, so grabbing this one, we're going to turn our mat over, pull the vinyl away from the mat, so that way we make sure we don't disturb that vinyl too much, and then I will see where this is cut, and I usually save most of my pink um, scraps because I use a lot of it. This is a, still a pretty good size, so I'll keep that, and then I will burnish the back just so I can make sure that vinyl is laid down nice and hopefully it will help this vinyl easily be transferred to our transfer tape. All right, so now just picking a corner and kind of starting there, we're gonna go slowly, make sure we keep all of our little stars. You, so not too. All right, and here I have this little star that's wanting to come up with my vinyl. So I'll just encourage that to stay down with my weeding tool. Just working slowly, monitoring. You want to monitor your carrier sheet and you also want to monitor the vinyl you're pulling up uh, because you'll kind of see if it's cut somewhere. It's not really coming off. You'll kind of see it um, on the vinyl side too. So just carefully paying attention to that. And this is one of the steps that it really, really pays to go slow and steady because going slow here and taking your time here could save your whole project. And it's like at this point, you're almost done. So it's, it's really, really, it's like heartbreaking when your project goes wrong at this step. So really just take your time there. I will quickly go through and collect all of my middles my letters here and sorry I cannot weed and talk apparently I can't do a lot of things and talk so 
I'm kind of getting used to that. So hopefully I'll get a little better with it, but I've learned I am not the best multitasker, apparently. All right, so that looks great. I have a piece of transfer tape that I had cut off my roll for something else. Um, I haven't used it yet, but it was just off the roll. And I think it'll be just about the right size for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to use this up since it is already cut. In this little scrap, I will just put over to the side with the rest of them, and that will definitely get used. So now if I have a longer design or a bigger design, you definitely want to take your transfer tape, grab a corner, bring it away from its carrier sheet. You'll expose just a little bit at the top there, and then you'll wanna lay that down on your design. Oops. Lay that down, and then that way you can take your little carrier sheet and pull it towards your design, and it'll lay down a lot nicer than trying to manage all of that transfer tape at the same time. So I have just a little bit of my pee here that the transfer tape didn't cover, so I'm just gonna be mindful of that and not run my weeding tool over it because it could snag it. So just being mindful of that, and then on the back, no problem there and then before I take this off I am going to cut this down just so hopefully I can get this laid nice and evenly on my blank which let me tell you is not my strongest suit um, I am the first one to admit when something I make is crooked or off kilter Girl, I know, I see it too. I, I don't see it like when I'm doing it, it always looks fine. But then it's like once I hang it or like once I'm like done with it and I step back and look, I'm like, oh my gosh, but it's fine. It's at this point, it's like kind of part of, <laughs> part of the charm of crafting at this point for me. Um, I just kind of accept that it's probably gonna be a little crooked. People that I craft for know that it's gonna be a little crooked. And that's just kind of my signature. So taking the transfer, the um, carrier sheet away from the vinyl, hopefully getting that vinyl to lay down just like that, that laid down very nicely. And then I'm just gonna bring in just my top piece here, just the scallop, and then hovering over my sign. Actually, let me trim because I have a little extra transfer tape on this side and it's throwing me off. So, all right, that looks really good to me. And then keeping in mind that we also have to place the bats, right? So I know that I need a little extra space at the top. That looks good to me. And then I will just very lightly, and then grabbing a corner, we will pull the transfer tape away from our design making sure everything's laying down. And then I will bring in our little bats. These little cutie pies, get these laid down nicely. On a power mission to like craft for Halloween, because I feel like it's the only time of year that I really use my black vinyl outside of like, you know, some home decor signs here and there. But I have like black vinyl that lasts me forever and I feel like the only time I really use it is Halloween and I and I love to use it for Halloween so I just I feel like I wait all year for this so you will see a lot of black vinyl this season but definitely mixed with pink still all right so now just bringing in my little bats you can definitely like look on design space to see exactly where the placement is for me I'm just gonna look at them individually I like the way that looks. It looks fine to me. That is perfect for me, no problem. That's how I like it and that's how they are gonna be put down on my sign. So I think that looks so cute. That is a matte black vinyl and I think it's just perfect for this design. So cute, that matte black with the shiny pink. Oh, I'm loving it. And what's going to take it up even more is now we're going to 
glue it on this base so it'll stand up and I can put it on my entryway table. So I was thinking of how I wanted to do this and honestly I was going to, let's clean up a little bit here. Okay, so I was going to buy some wood glue, but honestly, I didn't want to like get away from what I know. And let me just say like, I am all for the hot glue. It's what I know. It's what I love. It has never done me wrong. So that is what I am going to do. So I just flooded this with glue, uh, making sure not to get all the way to the edge, right? Because I said that some of this does show around the edge. So I'm just going to simply get that on there, get it as centered as I can. All right, guys, so this is how my sign came out. So I will say that when I went to sign this up, it stood up on its own, but it was a little front heavy. So I felt like it wanted to fall over on me. So I just simply glued three of these wood cubes that you also get at Dollar Tree. I just hot glued three of them together and then hot glued the three on the back. And now it just kind of stands like as a tilt and let me tell you this sign is so cute it came out even better than i could have expected i love it so much and i hope you do too i am so excited to start crafting for fall and halloween and everything that comes with that um so i hope to see you guys in the next video and thank you so much for watching bye